Hello there. That's my way of farming Uldaman by using the front door in Season of Discovery. So, this run kills about 120 mobs. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes per run. More mobs can be added for extra XP, but they don't really drop anything significant. It's mostly just random beasts, and they're not at level range to drop any of the juicy stuff. But they can drop some waylaid supplies and such, so it's not a terrible idea to add them. I don't think I do in this run, but they're around but about the second pull. You can just add mobs to the right where there's like extra scorpion packs and deletes. So anyway, let's get on to it. This is the first pull, and it's already underway. The pull, uh, the goal of this pull is to pull like all the mobs, including Revelosh, but pulling all the mobs up to where we will do the second pull, which means we're going all the way here to take the scorpions here. If it's a basilisk in the corner there, you don't really want to aggro the basilisk because basilisks de-aggro quite quickly. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, unless you like, unless they get like hit by frost traps, which every tick of a frost trap resets leash. This is true in open world as well. Same thing with some of the trogs in these corridors. So if it's a basilisk, don't pull it. If it's uh, a scorpion, you can pull it. The elite, but it doesn't really matter. You'll get it in the next pull anyway. So here, once we've pulled all of this, uh, we obviously want to have a slow trap in this corner here that I'm showing, like just anywhere around the corner where I'm dropping the traps. And the goal here is to just uh, burst down Revelosh with AoE and, well, single target damage as well. Uh, if you have good enough gear, which is basically a few Nomer pieces and like overall Prebis, you can ignore healing totems most of the time, unless you get very, very bad RNG with how many oracles instead of like assassins that spawns on the after Revelosh area. Generally speaking though, if you have good gear, you can just ignore killing totems and just focus down Revelosh first, because he's the only one that does damage in the first pull, like range damage, and then after that you just uh, focus down oracles one by one while you still AoE. Nothing really difficult there, just, just press your AoE button basically. We're gonna go up to the second pull now, and this is the hardest pull in the dungeon. And this is because we are going to be pulling all the dwarfs. I think I missed one pack in this video because my pet dies early. But we're, we're going to be pulling all the dwarfs. And what's hard with the dwarfs are that they are immune to slow. And there are casters in there called Earthen Sculptors, I believe. They're white or like, yeah, they look like white dwarfs or marble dwarfs. They, um, they don't update pathing as often as other, like the melee mobs. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. So they add a lot of extra difficulty because they will run around corners. Even if the other mobs are running away, they will keep running to where you were and then get in range and cast. So the whole pull here, the goal is to kill the Urban Sculptors basically one by one. And then we proceed with AoEing the rest of the pack. So here, I think my pet dies right about here, so I don't get the pack on the top left of the screen right there. So I'm missing like one pack of dwarves, I think I missed one elite. If you pull the ancient stone boss, I think he's called ancient stone keeper actually. He will do a tornado, if he's within 20 yards range and he's uh, in line of sight of you, he will cast like a tornado that silences. Pulling him isn't really a run killer, I don't think I got him here, but... With practice, it doesn't really matter. All it does is that you have less uptime on the kill phase later after you've killed the casters. It doesn't really change anything for caster because all you're doing is just avoiding casters or trying to avoid the flame buffet damage because it stacks up really high. So, same idea here. We're just gonna use the ledge first to until all the mobs have gathered. And you'll see that few of the casters I marked, and they're gonna be like splitting apart from the pack quite heavily, like here already. And now we're gonna change to the other side. This is a jump you should practice a bit, because it's a bit different from the first one. And what this does is, they're gonna path up to you on this side, obviously. Um, but the, the nice part of it is that you can help stack mobs, like group them up really tightly. I will do this later on as well, after I've killed the Sculptors, because right now it's just about, like, frantically trying to kill Sculptors without dying. 
And I, I will zo zoom in on minimap as well and I'll show what I mean. When it comes to the extra grouping. I think I've gotten most of the Earthrun sculptors here, so now the run should be... Or now I can start killing it like it's the a normal pack, basically. I think there's two left in there, but that's whatever. Uh, all you do is just make sure you focus down them early. Uh, the mobs are gonna split apart now quite a bit, because I let... Uh, while I'm focusing the dwarves, I let some of them get pretty far ahead. So we're gonna go up and group here, and I think I zoom in on the minimap as well. And what I'm looking for is to see as many mobs as possible in the top right area of that corridor on the left side, because that's like where they switch, uh, go onto the ledge. And as soon as I see most of them there, I'll jump down and and just switch to the normal killing ledge, and that will make them uh, stack up quite a bit. Same thing here, when they're going up on the left ledge, they go a little bit further into the middle before they climb the ledge. So you can, um, if you let them come kind of close to you before you jump up, you can get them to stack as well if they're getting slightly unstacked. After that, it's just doing this over and over. And as I said before, if you have the Ancient Stonekeeper in this pull, you will just be, you won't be out of shooting as much. You're just going to be doing like multi-shot and uh, uh, explosive shot and explosive trap and then light of sight as much as possible to prevent them spawning tornadoes. Because he only does that if you're in ladder sight. So now we're leading up to the last pull of the dungeon, which is to do all of the trogs in one pull. This dungeon, uh, this pull, if you, uh, if your pet dies after you've pulled a significant amount of trogs, you're probably just gonna have to do it either in two pulls or maybe just skip a few pull, uh, packs because all of the trogs will stack up fresh and once they're actually pulled. Or once you've pulled them once, they will just kill your pet instantly, whenever you try to do the pull again. Right here is a nice ledge that I just passed. You can stand on that to pull, uh, to be on an evade spot to prevent any problems. Right by there's like a little ledge with a uh, pillar right beside. But here we're gonna do the normal pull, and we're gonna make sure to pull like all the mobs here. And uh, as I said, if you take too long or if, if you if your pet dies or get dazed here you're probably gonna have to just uh, not go with all trogs in one pull i think i don't actually get the boss here but if you get the boss it doesn't matter like the boss uh, is es essentially just a geomancer with extra health here we are gonna use furious howl to get all the mobs aggro onto us and then we're gonna go down on the left because i didn't get that pack so if i go down on the left they're gonna like the stream of mobs is gonna run through the one pack I didn't have aggro, so I just keep pressing Furious Howl to make sure that they are targeting my pet rather than me. Now we're gonna go up and take the last few mobs here. Uh, so you can do trogs pretty convenient, uh, convincingly in one pull. You just have to practice that pulling a little bit. Downside is, as I said, they build up fresh, so it gets really hard if you don't do it on first pull, but it'll take a few runs and you, then you'll be able to do it pretty consistently. After that, we're just gonna go back. I think I, mi yeah, I missed one bat there, but after this, we're just gonna go back to the normal kill spot. So I said before, you could add like a few bats or L be elite beast and a scorpion that's here to the left where there's a basilisk. You could go through there and there's an extra dorm non-elite scorpion pack and there's like a few extra elite beasts. If you do pull the basilisks, you need to make sure that you drop like slow traps and explosive trap to 
to do any type of damage to them because otherwise they'll evade and if they are they'll evade with other beasts alongside them i'm not sure if they evade the humanoids as well but same pull here if you've done the back door it's just uh press your aoe buttons uh and uh, avoid the cast from geomancers mostly geomancers the flame weavers have a pretty short cast range so if you keep them well in the corner they will never cast anything but fire shield on themselves but they'll never cast immolate uh and it's actually easier to do to do the killing on this side for uh geomancers rather than the back door because you have so much more space and you also have the other wall you can use to group them up i'm not sure if i ever needed it in this pull but essentially this is how the pull will go the entire way and if you have the um if you do pull grimlock the boss he is also slowed by trap so it the pull doesn't change at all with Grimlock, except that you should probably be focusing Grimlock. There are a few more casts then, but basically the general idea is that you just put your stuff and then you hide. And then you can look at minimap a lot if all the dots are moving, etc. Including, or if you, you can mark Geomancers as well, if you have a weak aura for that, or manually do it. And it'll be easier to see when you can show yourself, because if they're moving, that means they're not casting. But yeah, you focus Grimlock then, because he's like... He's higher level, so he's gonna resist more explosive dot, explosive trap ticks, and he has much more health. But you just focus him down on the geomancers and then flame weavers and then last the melee mobs. And after that, we're actually done. There's not much else to the pulls other than practicing these jumps. The jumps are kind of easy, to be fair. At least on a troll, I know there's some slight differences in jumps, but what I do is I have like a slight angle as you notice. I, lo I'm always, I keep going to the left all the time. I press jump after when I'm about to reach the apex of the jump. I press uh, strafe, I mean A in this case, left strafe. 